What's up and what's happening, TPE fam? We are back with another episode of the Pivot Experience, and I've got some uh, a familiar face here with us. Um, this episode uh, is with Michael Laitler. Uh, this is our third episode recording, and today's episode was truly a treat. Um, we had the opportunity to really unpack some things that he had going on uh, currently in his career as a professional speaker, um, in particular, this conversation around uh, leading with wellness in mind, leading with wellness in mind and leading um, and thinking about the well-being of the people that you work with. You know, do you have an understanding of um, what's going on with those individuals and what's going on with those folks around you? And do you have the lens to and the and the, and the leadership uh, to, to step in and say something when you know that something that isn't going right or isn't uh, functioning at a capacity in which you know they can? And so um, let's dive into the episode. I Really believe this is a great one uh, for those of you who are leading in uh, leading people. They may be struggling um, with some things going on. We have a conversation around uh, what could you do and what can you do to try to help those individuals. Let's jump into the show. Take this mind of mine. What's up and what's happening, TPE fam? We're back with another episode of the Pivot Podcast. The Pivot Podcast is designed to help leaders get better uh, a little bit each and every day. And on this podcast, we love to have people who have interesting stories, um, who are leaders themselves, or who and who are professionals in the space. I've got someone who is familiar to this show. If you guys have heard this uh, person's voice before, you guys have seen this individual on this show, this show before. Uh, this is somebody who um, I have a great level of respect for. Uh, first of all, given um, they are a John C. Maxwell certified professional speaker. Um, you guys who have been following me on this journey know that that's something that I want to. Uh, pursue it as being a professional speaker so i really respect and i just admire uh just watching this this young man you know not i'm not not to say that he's uh i'm much older than him or or vice versa but this this uh, this gentleman go through this journey. And if you have followed him from our previous shows, you know, when you see him on LinkedIn, he might be in Dubai on Monday. He might be in Milwaukee on Thursday. He could be, uh, and I'm a little salty about this and we're going to talk about this. Um, I, he might be touching, uh, the, the newly erected, uh, statue of the mom. But if you guys follow my content and, and this is the LinkedIn side of the studio, right? We've got the other side of the studio where I kind of have you know some some areas that I pay homage to uh, Kobe Bean Bryant. But I'm talking about enough jabbering from me. But I'm talking about none other than Michael Laidler, the uh, professional speaker, uh, author, um, father, uh, just everything um, that a leader can and should be. Mr. Michael Laidler, how are you doing today? Man, I am good to go, man. It's it's great to be on the show again. When we talked about, it, I know we were supposed to get together earlier on last month, December sometime, and I just got kind of caught up on just different different tasks, different projects. But I'm excited to be here. I know we've talked about leadership, we talked about self awareness, growth, and just I love what you've done with the upgrade to the studio. I love to be able to see Kobe Bryant over there, but I love having this side, like you said, the professional side, the LinkedIn side, the the side that just impacts professionalism because you know one of the things that we're looking at is always how do we expand our business how do we influence more people and it's stuff like this it's having content it's having shows like this that highlight what not just what i'm doing but what you're doing because for people to understand to bring you in or just to say hey what does alex have going on this is the best way to do it yeah no i mean and i'm glad you kind of highlighted that a little bit you know I, I guess this is the pivot podcast where it would make sense for you know myself to have a pivot in thought you know you came when you recorded one of our earlier episodes we were on the other side that side is really uh, a a um reflection of my interests right the things that i like the things that i personally either grew up liking or may enjoy with my, my family or, or what have you but i had to quickly realize that i needed to pivot into a, a, something different mm -hmm. um if i was wanting to appeal to a particular audience if you know in our coaching business i mean we'll get to you know we'll talk a little bit more about that later um in the show but if i was going to impact the audience of people People who I thought was my particular customer, I had to learn to pivot. So I can't have a show called The Pivot Experience and not, you know, take some of my own advice um, in doing so. But I really wanted to just, 
in in just so the audience knows this is not a super scripted show uh today uh this is just two guys who are in the leadership space um that do real leadership things and i want to make sure that i'm clear that you know i work a nine to five michael you have a nine to five um and so the things that we talk about in our content if you follow us you know we're having the opportunity to apply these things um in our real lives and i think it's important uh for people who that do that do this work with us or, or choose to do anything with us know that we're not just talking about <laughs> these things we're yeah. actually living and, and embodying uh what it means to be a leader so i wanted to kind of uh, just bring this point to you and say like, what have you been up to? Like, you know, since the last time we recorded a lot has, uh, has transpired in your life. Um, you know, if, if you guys are really paying attention to the video, my man's got, you know, a little extra you know, facial hair. He got, he, he didn't, you know, uh, he jazzed up a little bit. Uh, but, but what else has been going on for you, man, you know, in, in the life of Michael? Well, I mean, first and foremost, I always have a good family life. So I always enjoy that. My son is doing great. He's really into basketball. Uh, my mom's doing great. My sister moved to Houston recently. So as far as the family goes, we're all doing amazing. On the professional side, staying busy. Um, one thing that I was able to do recently was I created a presentation called Leading into Wellness. And I kind of released it about the fall of last year. And what it entails is it talks about a leader's role in getting people into mental wellness programs. Not forcing them, not directing them, because I realized parts of my life where I wish a leader would have come up to me and said, you know what, Michael? I see you struggling. I see you having a hard time. You know what? I'm going to offer you this assistance. I'm going to show you a way. Now, that doesn't mean that I had to take it, but what I'm realizing that there's a gap. Like we have good leaders and then we have people that need help. And that presentation gives strategies and tips. So why I say that's something big, because since I've introduced it back in the fall, people are bringing me in left and right now to come do it. And it's not because I'm saying anything that's special or that's a uh, out of the ordinary, but people need help. People need a drive. People need the ability to get to a destination. And as leaders, that's what our role is. Now, there's so many other traits we can talk about when it comes to leadership. But one thing I'm really focused on in 2024 and going forward is when I see people that need help, especially mentally, or they're just struggling because life's going on, I want to help them get there. And every industry goes through it. Every single industry is struggling with it. It ain't just law enforcement. It's not just retail. It's not the food industry. Every single industry struggles with hard times. And a lot of times they don't know what the outlets are. So my goal for this year and going forward is helping leaders grow their skill level so they can recognize, intervene, and coach people into those areas. And I, and I think that's something, uh, you know, just being transparent, that's relatively n newer to the space. Yes. And in terms of just how mm. how much need there is out there, you know, um, if we're just being real, we probably grew up in a generation or a group at a time where you, it wasn't cool just to be forthcoming about how you feel or, um, you know, as if you look at it from a gender standpoint, right, um, as a man, you were supposed to shove certain things in and not yeah. express certain things. And so I, I see it to your point. You're in law enforcement. I'm in, um, you know, the QSR space, the you know, quick service restaurant space. I see it from uh, the the teenagers to, to, to mm. young adults to to um, you know people who are in their forties. You know, you just see a level of stress and calamity. Not necessarily calamity. That's a poor word for me to use, but you see the stress and the tension. There we go. Um, that exists for those individuals as they're trying to make it, and and, and I think you're hitting the nail on the head. A lot of people don't know where those resources are or not even that they might know where the resources are, but that, but you telling them or the leader coaching them to it or steering them through it affirms to them that, Hey, maybe, maybe I won't get talked about if I go take advantage of, uh, of the resources or, or I might not, uh, look like, uh, I'm weak or I can't handle, uh, things in my life. If I chose to, uh, take advantage of a program or seek, therapy or seek, seek uh, counseling. So I think that's really awesome. Like, I guess, you know, what would you say if you had a, to, you know, I'm just kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, and I'm sure you're prepared to answer the question. Uh, what would, if you had like a one liner, what's the elevator speech? I mean, I know you just kind of gave it, mm -hmm. but like, you know, to the uh, specifics of your presentation without, you know, giving too much up, you know, what would you, how would you sell it? You know, what's the, what, the, you know, what is the, if I'm approaching you uh, from Chick-fil-A, right, mm -hmm. and I say, man, you know, what I'm hearing what you're saying, but how do you resonate 
how you can you resonate with my demographic of of people or how would you uh put this to somebody who is 21 years old like how does that how does that transfer first i would say does it to be a leader does it require a title and most likely people may say yes or no but i'm gonna tell you no it doesn't so everybody has the opportunity to help somebody out and that's what i convey in that presentation so whether you're first time working the line at Chick-fil-A or you you're an operator or you're the CEO working in Atlanta or something like that you are a leader and in that role you have a responsibility to help push people and drive them in a certain direction and sometimes push and drive people are like oh that's kind of tough I don't care I don't care if people are oh that hurt my feelings I would, I'd rather hurt your feelings that means you're around but we have too many people committing suicide, going through depression, and sometimes it's like, oh, I don't want to look weak. But when you when you kill yourself, you look real weak, right? And that's and that's what people don't get. Like people, it's what I'm learning, especially in law enforcement, high stress environment, is that we come back and say, oh, I saw that. Oh man, I knew something was wrong, and I'm just like, why don't we address it? That was the same person. I mean, growing up, seeing my mother go through depression, seeing babies die in my hand, seeing people with bad traffic crashes. I learned how to mask my emotions. I learned how to hide them. And I wish I had people in my life that said, Michael, why are you doing that? Because now 20, or 19 years later, now I'm starting to feel those things. I'm like, man, all this bottled up energy, all this bottled up emotion. I wish I let out. I mean, I went to therapy today. I love therapy. I And people people don't believe when they say, I was like, I, I do it. Because it's amazing to talk to someone that's completely neutral. Not your spouse, not your kids, not your parents, not your best friend. Someone that's literally getting paid to listen and give you real advice. When you find that connection, you find yourself more opened up. So when I go talk to any industry about it, that's why I'm so passionate about it. Because I'm like, I was that person. And not many people can tell me that in a high stress environment like law enforcement where you can't look weak, that I we don't go through it. So I'm saying, I know if we go through it, other people go through it as well. But you're right. It's that stigma. It's that, that, oh man, if I say I, something's wrong with me, now that everybody's going to be looking at me weird. I'd rather have everybody look at you weird than nobody see you anymore. And then you suffer in the corner and then do something that you're going to regret. That's what I don't want to see. Right. And I, and I also think just, I feel like particularly in your industry, mm-hmm. as being a police officer, that that you need that continuous therapy, like the continuous work. Yeah. And, and okay, you know, I'm going to say that, not need, but you're in an environment, like you said, high stress, that could put you in a place to where you feel like, man, what did I just see today? Mm-hmm. And I think too, like, and I guess when, as you were saying it, my gears were turning, just like thinking about how your worldview is different now. You have a son, you mm-hmm. know? When you were, need to be there. When you first had, well, you got to be there, but then when you first got into the gig, you may not, you, okay, you don't have any children of your own. You empathize with those Correct. who have a family. But now that you have that and you have that level of responsibility, like I, I, I totally understand it. Like, you know, I, when I was much younger um, as a manager, I would look at certain situations with people and like at work and you know, moms had to, you know, they had to leave because kids were sick or, or it's, things far less stressful than some of the things yeah. that you're seeing. But I would kind of go, you know, I, I would get frustrated because how it was impacting what we were trying to get accomplished at work. Mm-hmm. Now I understand it a whole lot different because I'm, I see it in my own household. Correct. You know what I mean? And I get the pressure of like, oh, well, I don't, I gotta, I don't leave. You know, my wife kind of, typically handles those things and so like having firsthand experience with those things kind of really changed my view Mm -hmm. now i think in your arena you haven't necessarily had any firsthand uh um like incidents with uh what you're experiencing out in the field at home but it's just this that could be my kid that could be me like and then how does that you know so so i think that that totally changes um the perspective And, and it's and it's really cool to hear somebody in law enforcement have the self-awareness like mm-hmm. we've talked about before to say that, and I think this is you know, no plug here. And uh, this probably will come out after this presentation. <laughs> uh, but you know, we do a monthly lead better. Um, I've kind of been posting that on, on the socials and uh, this month 
we're going to be talking about what this month's lead better is about emotional intelligence. And mm -hmm. one of those components is self-awareness. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you, given your profession, understanding the toll that they can, that, that they can have on you mentally, uh, the toll that they can have on you spiritually, like, and having the wherewithal to say, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get help. I don't necessarily have anything wrong. I don't feel no way. But I just think it's healthy to be able to put myself in a neutral neutral position to be able to talk to somebody that's going to give me an unbiased uh, viewpoint of my thoughts or or to help regulate you know where my thinking is going. You know, and I, and I think there's nothing nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you you need to have the outlet that with somebody that doesn't have any skin in the game. So that's that's pretty cool. So how many times do you think you've uh, had the um, opportunity? Or or let me say this. What tell me about the time where you delivered this? Like, what what was the biggest audience, or what was the most the most impact you thought you drove? Like, do you have a story from it? Did you have any like anybody giving you any feedback from a from a from a show that really stuck with you and resonated with you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I did a um a couple of keynotes in Corpus Christi not too long ago where they had about six hundred staff, about well, 500, 500 plus, and I had people come up pretty much after every presentation and say, "Man, you know what? I was struggling," or Man, I, I know someone like that. So I know it's impacting people because people would be bringing me in. And one of the things I, I, I don't know if I mentioned on the last show, but I learned, especially when I was growing my speaking business, is the market will tell you what they're looking for. And when I brought this presentation out, it was actually another organization that said, hey, do you have anything like this? And I was like, you know what? I have things that are kind of separated, but not together. And as soon as I put it together, I start pitching to other organizations and they're like, yeah. Please bring this. So I don't just bring it to the law enforcement realm. I bring it to any industry. It's just obviously my background is typically law enforcement. But what I realize is that everybody struggles. So I had a person come up to me, and this was actually in Ohio. Um, or what month is this? We're in February. Earlier this month. And she was telling me how prior to getting into law enforcement, she had a horrible domestic violence case like with, on her where her ex-husband stabbed her like in the face and like abused her kid and everything like that. And now she comes and she just blows it off. Like, oh, it's all good. But she sees kind of the the impact it has on her. So when she heard the presentation, she was like, you know what? Maybe I do need to get in a little bit of a program of some sort. Even if you're going to talk to somebody once a day, or excuse me, once a month, once every three months, it's better than nothing. Because you got that neutral party that's going to really make a difference. So those stories have increased. And I, it, it is trickling down because people are starting to realize that it's one of those areas of leadership that it's easy to be timid on. And that's, I, I'm, I'm going to use that word. People can be timid on dealing with mental wellness because it's like, well, what do I say to that person? What if they take it the wrong way? Once again, I don't care how that person takes it. If you see an issue, because you know how your employees are, you've been in, in leadership for what, nearly 20 years, if not more. Yeah. So you know when your employees are different. But I'm hoping after this podcast, now you see them and you're like, you know what? Now I need to intervene and help them out. Because if you're able to do that, what? how much of an impact can you make on their life as a leader? Because we see things all the time. Let, let's be real. If the person comes in, they look a little disheveled or you know, they always have that crisp uniform. Now they're wrinkled all the time. It's like, what's going on with you? Like, what's the problem? And then, but a lot of times we won't do that. We won't say that. We won't go up to that person and say, hey, what's going on? Because we're worried about all the other things that could happen. I want people to stop worried about that. I want leaders to start saying, if I don't help them out, what happens? Not if I help them out, what will the company say or what will the agency say? Because if you can save a life because you intervened, you are a leader because people are following you. So your job is to lead them to a longer life. As, as much as everything else you're supposed to lead them with, leading them to something that's better, that's going to help them out is just as important as all those other traits you talk about on your other shows. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely. Um, and I think this is something that I've just personally leaned into. I, I, I tend to err on the side of caution when trying to steer somebody towards like, professional help because mm -hmm. yeah. you know just the legalities yeah. the the you know what that may look like but i guess for me to what your your point of like that recognition of something that's not right i think that's the most important thing and then just for me you know i got i get the opportunity to serve about 200 people um you know two two twenty ish people uh that's how many people we have on our team and i try to make a point to just say something like 
say something to them that says, hey, I'm just checking in on you. I don't want to be too invasive. I, I don't want to get into your business. I don't want to make you feel like I'm in your business. But I want to acknowledge the fact that I, I recognize that something may not be wrong. And then it's OK if you want to talk, hmm. you know, and I think that's my stance on it. Like, you know, and, the, and it also depends on just the proximity of me to that person in terms of the function of the job. Like, you know, um, we've got, you know, other directors, managers, you know, trainers. And then so it just depends on like where the gravity of I know what their job is, you know, because I mean, you know, a lot of people look at what we do is just hey, y'all just serving food. But at a, at a certain volume, at a certain. Um, You're still dealing with people. You deal with people. And people are people are mean. Well, pe- yeah, 100 percent. But then also to like just the. Some of the stuff that we we come across, some mm-hmm. of the things that we that we deal with on a day to day basis, could stress you out. You know, um, I probably sh- I'm not going to say this, man. I, I was because I, I just I'm not going to say it. But we've had some incidents recently uh, involving some 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 accidents, man. They go like, whoa, you know, that could have been really bad, mm-hmm. you know. And and in, and, in, and, in, and in 20 years, as we continue to learn how to do business differently and we explore different avenues uh, to be able to um, create create sales. You do different things, and so different things are happening. And like I said, certain things have been happening. I go, man, this is kind of horrific. That could have been, that could have been far worse than what it was. And then just the dealing with the stress of that. And I know for me, dealing with the stress of it, I can know that somebody who may not have as much leadership experience, doesn't have been around as long, doesn't have mm-hmm. as, much, as much tenure, how they might feel about uh, some of the things that we've been dealing with, and then having to go home and try to put it all together for their families. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, man, some days. You know what what the job requires, particularly if you're going to be in a position like yours or like in mine, and or or if you're aspiring to that. And I think the important thing here to unpack or or just to address, not unpack necessarily, um, for the audience is is that I think a lot of people who are listening to this are either a in the position that they want to be in and they're trying to get better or pursue more, or b uh, they're they're they feel like there's a lot more for them to achieve, and then they're trying to find different things or different content to help them get better. But just understanding the importance of what Michael is bringing to the table as it relates to making sure you take care of your your your, the, your inside, like taking care of your your mental health, your 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 physical health, your spiritual health, like and, and just recognizing the signs when you need to to mm-hmm. to take a moment to yourself. Um, you know, my dad used to have a. Um, it's kind of weird now that I'm kind of verbalizing this. I never really said this out loud, mm-hmm. but I guess essentially he had a podcast back, like yeah. A long, a while back, actually, you know, well, you know, he he, uh, he started a ministry um, when I was a teenager where he wanted to read the Bible mm-hmm. um, and put it on CD. Absolutely. And because uh, he felt like, and there's no offense to nobody, I hope no, this doesn't come across offensive, but he's like, you know, everybody gets getting on TV and putting their spin on the word, no one just saying the word, right? Mm-hmm. And he called it a moment of clarity. That was the name of the of, yeah. of his ministry. But it's like I think everybody needs that moment of clarity where. You know, you sit still and you really try to reconcile uh, things within yourself. And if you can't do that within yourself, seek the help that you need to be able to do those things. And, um, you know, that's more and more prevalent these days. Um, I'm me myself. If I was just being really honest and transparent, I think I miss in growing up a certain not growing up a certain way from a parenting standpoint, just societal. Yeah, I think it's across the board. I don't think it has nothing to do with um particular set of parents but i just think that was the, over, the the overarching voice was you have to be strong you know um there there's not much room for weakness and you know i kind of still probably hold on to though that that mindset I, I i i i tend to think like well maybe did that attribute or contribute to where i am today but i just think that you know i've got to i've got to realize more that that everybody isn't designed like that and some people need the space to be able to um, seek the help that they need, mm-hmm. basically, you know. Um, so, no, no, that, that, I think that's 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 pretty cool, man. So you got that presentation. It sounds mm-hmm. like that's a home run. Um, I, I would, you know, I'll you know, maybe think about how can we, you know, I would love to maybe expose some of our leaders to to yeah. the, the, the content because I think that would be uh, well worth their time. Because I think, like I said, all of us are. One, dealing with things on our own, and two, dealing with people who are dealing with things. So uh, I think it'll be worth the listen for us for sure. So, but what else do you got going on? Uh, besides, you know, besides that that presentation, what else is going on in Michael's world? I mean, professionally, that's been the biggest thing. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get on bigger stages. I'm always trying to grow. I'm always trying to learn how to pivot to different um, experiences that allow me to grow. But even with that presentation, it's helping me grow as a person because 
you know, when you hear other people experience, especially when they come and talk to you or they come up at your presentation, it's like a whole new life. It's like, man, they came up to you. They said X, Y, and Z. One things, one of the things I want to kind of give back on the presentation is two things, two activities I do to kind of highlight a lot of the stuff. First, I tell people to describe, give me some leadership traits. So I let them say all the different names, all the different traits. I say all the traits you all just said. Did y'all use anybody's title or anybody's name in there? So I go back to, I know you talked about people who are looking for leadership roles. You don't have to look for the roles. If you have anybody following you, and more than likely, everybody does, you're a leader. Like John Maxwell talks about all the time. If you ha- if, if, if no one's following, you're not a leader. But on the other hand, everybody has somebody, whether you're a parent, whether you're a bigger brother, a younger sister, you're a minister, you all have leaders. You can be on a team together and the fact that you might do an act, a, a, a particular task better, people are looking up to you like, oh, how did Alex do that? Like, you know what I mean? Because there's executive directors all around Chick-fil-A and everybody has different levels of expertise. So you might call on somebody else and say, hey, you know, did you ever have this going on? To that person, that's a person as a leader to you. They don't have any direct oversight or any power, so to speak, but they're that person that helped lead you. The second thing I say is I do challenge you as a leader and anybody that, that's in a leader that, that considers himself any leader, when you actually see those things, you got to dig deep into people because nine times out of 10, they're not going to tell you the truth. And one thing I talk about and the activity I do is I talk about take a pie, take a circle, and let's look at the different types of communication for, for this particular one. I look at the words people use, how they say them, and their body language. So when you're thinking about this pie, you say, okay, it's 100% in the pie. Most of the time, when we ask somebody a question, where if they say, no, I'm fine, we leave it at that. We're like, you know what? The person told me they're fine. Studies will show that communication, when you look at that whole pie, the words people use is only 7% of the real communication. 38% on how you say it. And trust me, you've been married. You know when you say something to your wife and you're like, all I said was, I didn't want dinner tonight. And then she says, Oh, it's the way you said it. You're like, oh my goodness gracious, what did I do? Oh, and it's real. And everybody, everybody that's been there, but hey, whoever's watching it, this was not pre-discussed. <laughs> this is all Michael. This is all Michael in in his in his natural form. So this wasn't. We had no pre-production on this. Go ahead, no, go no. And then the last fifty-five percent is body language. Sure. So when we're looking at people, how we communicate with them, we're taking seven percent, seven percent of the entire picture and running with it because it's easier to not to say, well, I checked the box. I asked the person what's wrong. So for the leaders out there, that's one, another activity that I like to do because I want people to know that 90, the, if we're not looking at the other 93% of the communication, when it comes to really trying to help our people out, people that we lead, we're going to miss it. So it's easy to miss. So, okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Cause that was my excitement part for leading into wellness, but that's one of the things that I've been looking at and, it's really been life changing because I, I mentioned earlier and I didn't get too deep, but growing up, my mother suffered from depression. Like when I was 16, she tried to commit suicide. So I was in a household early on that had that. And when I found out that happened to her, I saw her, I went to church, I tried to get right. I told myself from that day forward, I'm never going to show weakness. I didn't have a role model. I didn't have a father figure. I didn't have any strong mentors, male or female, that can tell me that. You know, Michael, maybe you shouldn't bottle that up. So from 16 to 19, I, I, I told myself I wouldn't do it. 19, I became a police officer. So now I learned how to hide emotion even better. So now I had a system. Now I'm like, you know what? When I go to bad calls or I deal with something at home that's rough, I'm going to hide it because in my mind, my perception, me being stupid, oh, it's normal for a man not to show weakness. So I wanted to change that narrative, but I didn't know how to. So that's when I get all to the leaders and the grow and development. I And I tell everybody, your self-awareness starts before you put on any uniform, whether it's a Chick-fil-A uniform, Jefferson County sheriffs, Beaumont police, whoever it is, your life starts before that. So you need to start working on yourself now because when you get in situations that push you, you're going to be struggling if you're not ready for it. Same thing as a leader. When you see your staff struggling or you see that person on your team that's having a bad day and you you just look at them like somebody else will do it. That's where we go wrong. 
Yeah, no, um, you know, passing the passing the buck is is you know just to to use uh I guess lamest terms is is it's never good uh, because at a certain point it'll come back around if you don't mm-hmm. address it. You know, yep. um, you know, passing it off to somebody who maybe didn't really see what you saw. Uh, mm-hmm. who didn't experience what you experienced. Um, like you said, a lot of people are really good at putting the mask on. They're, they're really good at uh, just kind of just saying the words. And and if you, yeah, a lot of times we get busy and a lot of times we, we make the excuse of like, okay, you said you were good. Yeah. Even though I, I, I there's been plenty of times where I take I've done it at that face yeah. value just because I wanted to move on. And just because I, you said it, check the box. I asked. Yeah. I asked, yeah. and, and you had every opportunity to say, you know, and, and, and you know, just saying it out loud. It's just that is not the power, the best, the best. No means of being we've done it. To, yeah, yeah, I, I've done it. Too. Trust me, hey, Alex, you're not like the thing is. I tell people like the reason why I talk about mental wellness leadership. It's not because I'm the number one. Like, like I wrote every leadership book out there, or I'm a psychologist therapist. I've experienced these things. Yeah. It's not like I'm not telling you from my own life. I've had friends com- commit suicide that I should have seen the signs earlier. So I understand what that is. And when I look forward now, I'm like, you know what? I can't generally miss the opportunities to help people out. I can't because I'm not on the world for that. I'm not in this. I'm not on this world to miss those opportunities to see people grow. I don't want that. And when I see people struggling, I want to address it. Is it I'd rather them hate me for the rest of their lives because I ask them a tough question that me not ask. And then they do something harmful to themselves or somebody else. Because you know what I mean? Like, cause we, we've all done, we're like, man, like I said earlier, we're like, I wish I would have said something. You know what? I'm gonna leave that to Alex. You know what? A- Alex will deal with them next shift. And it's like, they may not be their next shift yeah. because you didn't take care of what you were supposed to do as a leader because you already knew what the signs were. Cause you, you, every, every, every single person, I don't care what industry you're in, you struggle in something. And sometimes it's not your fault. Maybe you have a kid at home that's bad, or maybe your parent is sick. Maybe you know what I mean. Maybe you're. Maybe you have some sickness. I mean, it doesn't have to be work related. So everybody has a struggle. You talking about the accidents going on in Chick Fil A? Sometimes I wonder when you say that, how did they get to that point? Is it just work related that their mind was off, or was it deeper? Right. Because sometimes people are distracted. I I, I know friends that have four or five kids, and I have one. And trust me, my level of stress when it comes to kids is different from theirs. Yeah. But if you don't know that, if you don't ask the person, like, hey, what's going on at home? They're gonna probably say, "Oh, nothing," but you got to dig deeper because that what that might be what can minimize some of those accidents that you have going on. Because you dig too deep, you're like, "Oh, why you're you're just always tired? What's wrong with you? You don't sleep at home?" And then you break it down, you're like, "Oh no, my kids, oh my my kid, this kid had COVID, that kid had had the flu," and now you're just like, "Oh, maybe I should have dug a little deeper into it." Then just assume they're lazy yeah. bums because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. easy, you know, it's easy yeah, to it's say easy. someone's lazy. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. And I think the thing is for me. Um, and I and I just thought about this as you were talking about it because you know this situation happened such a long time ago. Um, I'm well, we might be talking like maybe 15, 16 years ago. I had a good friend, really good friend. Uh, we used to hang out all the time. And I say used to because this incident really kind of maybe changed the trajectory of the friendship. Like, you know, he was uh, he had a relationship issue and. Uh, he was going through it, and one day, uh, his former uh, partner called and was like, "Hey, you know he, you know he said he was gonna, you know, lock himself in the in the in the garage and leave the car running and let that be what it be." And so, all right, that com- that phone call comes to my phone, mm-hmm. and I have, you know. At the time, I think I uh, let's see. I forget what I was. I was actually doing. I just remember. I was like, man, I got a decision to make. Either I can continue on, just living my life in this moment, or I go see about my friend. And so I, I said, man, I got. I feel like this is. If I don't get up and something happens, you know, and it's not all about this. It's not a reason why I got up because I didn't want to be. I didn't want to re- regret anything. I genuinely wanted to go mm-hmm. see what my friend was. But the thought came to mind. It, it ran across my mind like, hey, if you don't, you, if you don't take this serious because. You know, this has kind of been stated before, but it wasn't nothing ever happened. But I was like, if you don't take this one time serious, then this could be the actual time. I mean, I got up and I went, um, you know, checked in on my friend, trying to be a friend. And uh, doors was locked on the house. Yeah, I knew he was in there. He was, you know, hey, man, y'all leave. I'm just going, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, all right. And I tried to get in the house. Couldn't get in. And the only thing I thought to do, I I was calling people. Yeah. I was trying to get in touch with family, mm -hmm. his family. And the only thing I thought to do was, I said, I got to call the police. Mm -hmm. Like, as literally nothing else. Like, all right, you are saying, and I felt like I heard, you know, yeah. the car in the garage. And I was like, yo, if you tell, if you, if you genuinely going to do, I got, I can't, you, I'm not going to let you do that. You're going to be mad at me. Y'all going to be, oh, everybody going to be mad at me. Easily. And that's what happened. They, 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 just met you, know, you and you I, I wouldn't go what i mean you, you there's no other there's nothing else that i could have even thought to like hey you're not showing me any signs that you're not gonna you just want to lay down or you just want to chill correct like this is sound like it's gonna be serious man and and, and, I, and i and i and i always look back at those moments and and that moment kind of whenever I, I see something like that at work maybe not as severe but i see the makings of it you know that thought run across my mind where you know I, I don't say i lost a friend per se there was other things in the mix that kind of um presented itself as a divide but that was a moment where it was like yo uh because man his mom was mad you mm -hmm. know his because he because they you know that i think you gotta go i don't remember the procedure but like, there's a procedure for that yeah yeah you just have to stay 72, <laughs> 72 yeah, that's hours a procedure so they went through the procedure. what is he doing nowadays uh he's okay he's all right so, so that that's what that's perfect He's alive. Yeah. Now, yeah, let, yeah. now let's 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 take it from the other angle. Let's say you said, "Nah, I'm not gonna go there." He's just playing games, and he killed himself. Yeah. What would you be saying in February of 2024 yeah. that you you would have been saying you would have regretted that for the rest of your life right. that you didn't go there yeah. and lose a friendship? Yeah. Versus lose a person. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I I I I'm cool. Like <laughs> you're. I, that's the stories that people need to hear. Yeah. Because. If if your friend goes all out to, to, to try to protect you, that's a good friend. Yeah. And if they don't appreciate that, I'm cool with that. Because you know why? At the end of the day, you did what you were supposed to do. Yeah. And if it was something else happened and you didn't do what you're supposed to do, then what? Yeah. And you know, and, and like I said, and I think this just goes down to like the the need for you to be able to, and I, and I always look at these, you know, I've always said like, you know, I talked to my mom, like, you know, this plot, like this medium is therapeutic because you get a chance just to really talk out yeah. a bunch of stuff. But this is like, you don't know how many instances, I mean, that, I, look, I, like I said, I, I see a lot of this, this same level of stuff at work. And as people going through real things and I listen, I go, man, and I, and I and I've gotten older now, so I'm less apprehensive on how I say it. Especially when I see stuff like this, I go, "Hey, I think you, we really, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not licensed. I'm not giving you clinical advice. I just think that you ought to take, you know, some of these concerns to someone who is qualified to be able to mm -hmm. listen, um, and to give you the feedback that you need, um, and to, and to help steer you in the direction that you need to be steered in. So, I mean, I know we've belabored this point, but I think no. it's something. If, if, uh, because, you know why it's it's fine I, I can live with belaboring stuff like this you know why because people need it yeah we we yeah. both grew up in an era and there was eras tougher than ours there were generations tougher than ours right. that don't want to talk about this and then when they're struggling with depression they're like oh i don't know why it's because you try to handle everything your brain your brain isn't any more special than mine yeah it's like your brain needs that help and if you can if i can if some old school people out here can see it and say ah you know what i never thought about that before but you know what? Maybe these these youngins can do it, or some of young might say, "Oh, these old folks. May, maybe they don't know. Maybe they may not realize this." But now it's in their mind. Like, hey, if you need help, go get it. If you see somebody that needs help, especially with mental wellness or self awareness, not saying you're the doctor. Get into their business a little bit. Get into them and guide them because that's your that's that. If you want to call yourself a leader, if you're watching TPE, you're watching this podcast. If you want the title of a leader. You're going to, have to do things that are uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Leadership is not easy, and anybody that gets into that role thinking that oh this is going to be gravy, they're wrong, and they're going to suffer because leadership is tough. Yeah. People are hard, but you do get a feeling of of satisfaction when you help that person because not your friend or acquaintance now, he doesn't understand it. But there's other people out there that wish they had the Alex Seals that would come to their house and call the police to help them out. I promise you that people want that. People really do. Trust I, I, I deal with convicted felons. I've done it over 10 years. And they don't always like us, but I've heard some of them say, hey, thank you for still being here. 
because we know you have a job and your job is what keeps us alive. Take that same concept as a leader. Your job is to help people out of all levels, not just what's comfortable yeah. or not just what the main like mainstream says, not because it's your core values. No, you got to look at people as people and you as a leader, like, what am I doing to help people stay here? Will it always be perfect? No, but if you try and you show that effort, people appreciate that. Yeah. And like I said, man, that's probably one of the, one, that's probably had to be one of the toughest decisions that I've ever had to make. It's calling, like calling the police. You know, you know how, you know, okay. I don't even I, do it. I, I, I don't do it either. Trust me. I'm in the role. Trust me. You know, hey, Alex, don't, don't, just because I'm in the role don't mean I do it. Trust me. I get stopped. I get tickets like everybody else. I'm like, man, they got me too. Okay, well, I'm glad. Yeah, I was just literally about to say, like, you know, you're all of us. Saying this all of us. Officer, but I'm like, you know how, you know, we were talking about like growing up a certain, you know, certain it's things harder. you just Listen. don't do. Like, you can call the police it's on your friend. It's harder it's like, on us as police officers to call police officers. Trust me. Because you got to think about it. Because now, now, but now, but you got to think. So take that level of, of disappointment you have for calling it. Now think about if you're in the industry, just like let's say something happens at Chick-fil-A, for example, and you're like, man, now I got to call another manager and tell them what I did. You're yeah, like, you don't want to call them, but, you, but you'll call somebody else completely random in the industry and, and you'll tell them, let's say they just work for another um, another fast food chain, for example. You could call them and be happy, but you don't want to tell your peer that they're like, what do you mean you didn't do that? It was in the handbook. Oh, uh, you are right. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. So police officer, we don't want to call the police officer problem. If, like, we're very disappointed when we can't handle our problems, which causes a whole nother issue. Mm -hmm. But trust me, we don't want to call either. I, it ain't just it ain't just society. <laughs> yeah. Nobody really wants to call. Yeah. But I mean, they're there for a reason. And it's good because they're obviously a lot of them are trained to handle the situations. And that's the best answer versus you kick the door in. And let's say he had a gun or something like that. Right. And now like, he's like, I'm taking you and me out. So mm -hmm. you got to still be realistic yeah. on life. Like I said, that, that, that was, man, that was a tough day. But I just said, I I wouldn't, I can't, I couldn't, wouldn't be able to live with myself. Like you said, just live with myself if that, knowing that, man, I could have stopped something from happening, you know. And who knows? I'm, we might still have, you know. I, I To this day, I don't know how serious or not. Like, you know, the, the tune changes if the police show up. You it might, does. You, no, you you're might right. not get as serious about something. When it, and again, I don't want to dwell on this uh, story, but I just, I just remembered that, like, yo, like, yo, like I remember, yeah, I had to deal with that in, in, in a very real way. And 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 for 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 the sake of conversation, it just it didn't it didn't I don't think it ended the the best. You know, like I said, we we we're, we're cordial and I see him. He's still alive. Like, yeah, yeah. That's that's where it needed to end. That's yeah. the way that's where it needs to be. He's alive. Yeah, man. No, um, but no, Michael, um, I think we filled the stat sheet easily. Yeah. Uh uh uh, uh um and I, and I think that and not to make light of our conversation, um, I think we, we were able to have a conversation that I think is going to be fruitful to anybody who chooses to take the time to listen. Um, I Hopefully, you know, we were able to share. Thank you so much for being yeah. open about uh, what it is that that you're doing. I think, again, without us, you know, having any pre-production, no, kind of just coming in here. Yeah. I think the topic of conversation was very timely. Uh, I actually might work to try to get this uh, out a little sooner than probably anticipated because I yeah. think it correlates definitely to the conversation of emotional intelligence. Um, I think this is a very uh, detailed side of being emotionally intelligent, being self-aware um, and, and having the, the understanding to try to help other people. So I, I appreciate you bringing that to the TPE. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of the things we talk about are tactical strategic management things concepts but yeah. you're to your point there's not a whole lot of time spent on this conversation and i think our our workplace cultures our workplaces need to have this conversation more regularly um as the stressors in life are you know are, are increasing you know economic challenges uh personal social challenges for so many different people uh, are happening right now and so i'm, I'm thankful that you were able to share, you know, you were willing to share um, your story mm -hmm. on, on, on the platform. And, and thank you for being open yeah. and transparent. Absolutely. And um, again, TPE family, um, we're back in full swing. Uh, I actually would like to probably have Michael on more often. Uh, this is maybe what, this is our third, third recording on. I TPE. think so. Yeah, I think, I think we did one. Um, we did one um, virtually. Yeah. Then we did the one, the first ones. Yeah. We did it live. 
and recorded now this one yeah that was a, I, yeah that, that might have been the first one yeah in studio yeah that was first in studio yeah, yeah. man so so no man I, I appreciate um all the wisdom that you forwarded me um anytime i've ever called text um just reached out you you've you've uh answered the call and mm-hmm. you've never like uh, i don't use this phrase gate uh, gate be a gatekeeper but you've always been open oh, yeah. about um the process you know and, and i'm hoping that I've, I've given the same uh grace to you you know as it relates to the things that you might have questions for me for which is not mm-hmm. that much but um hopefully i, I I've, I've been a, a good uh ally and friend in that regard mm-hmm. uh to you as well man but um before we wrap up and close out where can the people find you well my favorite platform is linkedin okay. and i like you got your linkedin studio going on <laughs> this is my favorite platform is, is, is linkedin so people can find me at michael laitler no they in the middle just literally michael laitler and obviously if they're friends with you obviously they can scroll through your friends list and find you i do a little bit of work on ig i'm starting to pick that up a little bit i don't really do anything on x um, I still got an account on there. And then my Facebook, I do a little bit there, but I've been really focusing on bringing um, leadership and wellness to people. So if you look at my page, especially on LinkedIn, I post five days a week. It's always something related to something with your mind and growing and building or things I have going on. Like when it comes to this podcast, I'll put that out there so people know I put whatever reels you create based on it. But LinkedIn, I tell people if you really want to see me in action as far as like in writing format and you want to connect, that's the best way to do it. Obviously, you can email me or my website, but LinkedIn is I'm on it two or three times a day at least, uh, either interacting or posting. And then it's just something that I really like. Like I said, IG, if you have IG, which a lot of the the younger generation does, they can still get me on there. Um, I have a few posts on there. I'm, I'm starting to increase my reels. I know I was talking to you. I'm starting to increase that side because I understand the 10 to 15 second clips get people really the reels between TikTok, IG, Facebook, YouTube, shorts. Our attention span is not getting any better. No. So I, I so I understand how all that works on those platforms. So I am on all the major platforms, but I, I'm if whatever people look for, they type Michael Layler just in even Google, they're gonna find me because I've been in this business speaking business now for this will be going on my seventh year. So I've had a lot of time to, to build up my SEOs, my search engine optimization. So even if you type my name in, you'll find me in all my contact, my cell phone number, my email, all my social media things. People can find me. Awesome, man. But again, thank you for stopping into the TPE, helping leaders pivot into their next, um, helping leaders think about wellness and think about just mental health um, at, at a greater scale. Michael, thank you again. I can't I keep saying it, but thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Um, and until next time, TPE family, peace.